morning, good morning, good morning everybody. Um, waking up today, I saw the chart, I saw GPGPY especially, and I saw GPGPY, it came up to the resistance we formed yesterday, and then it kind of broke above it, and now it's coming back down. And this is on the 15 minute and the 30 minute time frame. So if we're coming back down and we got interest rates coming on, I think this is going to be a pretty good move happening very, very soon. So let's just do our fresh analysis here. Let me first see if our systems are all up and running. The systems need to be up and running, right? They need to be up, up, up and running. Okay, so the systems are good. Let's take a look at... Oh, wait a minute. There's no interest rates for the pound. It's tomorrow. Oh, wow. I, I got excited for no reason today. Okay, that's fine. So, so far what's happening is we made a high at 136.250 on GBJPY. We also broke above this resistance here to the left. So, basically, yeah, I'm going to be looking for a support to be formed at this point. Because if you can get a support form, I think that's going to be a very good idea for price to continue up towards, you know, 136,400. Back up over here. I think we're going to continue up to this range over here. Let's take a look on the daily. Daily is continuing bullish as well. Daily has made a... Now, this support is being held by one, two, three, four daily candles, right? If this support is being held by four daily candles, this makes sense for the daily candle to continue up to fill the wick at 136, let's say 400. 136.450 looking down to the four hour time frame four hours also very very bullish trying to head up as well so we're gonna like you know go with the bullish bias looking on the one hour time frame now one hour formed 35 minutes ago it's just coming down looking at the 30 minute now we need a support formed in this area because if i can get a support formed, i think then price has a high probability for it to continue moving bullish Looking at the 15 minute, 15 minutes still struggling here. So basically we're going to wait for the 15 minute to close and see if we can get support formed or not. Um, with respect to news, we got retail sales. They're looking at less numbers here. So we're going to see how that comes out. We got CAD CPI as well. This is going to move CAD if someone's trading CAD. So just be aware you got CPI for CAD here. Um, later on, we got the FOMC. This is going to be really, really interesting for gold and the US dollar. We'll see if we can um, live stream the rates, if I'm going to be available or not. And we'll try to do that. But I, what I want to know is what caused this move up? Was it the Euro news? Or was it just regular market movement what's this yeah i think it was just regular market movement the price just moved up this last hour you know when the four hour kind of form we broke above all these resistances so if we broke above all these resistances i think there's going to be a very very good probability for price to create a support maybe over here or maybe wherever it creates a support i'm going to be looking for buys so that's what i'm going to do today my whole idea approach today is to look for support formed on the pound Take a buy and, and call it a day. Okay, we got some questions coming in here. Hasn't support been formed with the 30 minute closing bearish? Yeah, it's closing bearish. So you will need a candle to close bullish to form support. So we'll have to wait over here. Let's take a look at gold. Where's gold? Gold is right here. Gold is at, ooh, 1965, almost at 1970. It has to go back up to 1970. Let's take a look on the four hour. Gold is doing the same structure as GJ, coming back up to fill this range. It's coming back up to this high it made over here. Let's take a look on the one hour. One hour is now kind of like ranging, right? One hour is ranging, so same thing here if this candle closes bullish i think there's a very high chance for the next candle to continue moving up i think bad retails i mean if you look at the price action right price action on gold is bullish right now we have a range to fill we have support being formed with this candle closing bullish a support will be 
um, like, you know, respected there. And if the news they're expecting it to be bad news, which means gold should continue moving up, and it makes sense over here, you know, if they're expecting bad news, then based on price action, gold should be continuing bullish. Um, I meant a resistance couldn't an entry at the break of the 30 minute high. Yeah, so basically, I'm not looking at the break of the high. What I'm looking at is to see if we can get a support formed, like a bullish candle formed on the 30 minute, maybe over here or down over here, and then try to take a buy. Until that happens, there's basically nothing really we can do right now. Well, I can't do right now. Can't take a sell because my bias is bullish. Uh, when you do your analysis, what time frames do you mainly focus on? Uh, mainly focus on seeing that you only aim for like 10 pips, probably like 30 minute, one hour time frame. So if I look on the one hour, one hour is coming down. If I look at the 30 minute, 30 minutes coming down. So I want the support to be formed. And then I know there's a this range is around 15 pips. And if there's volume in the market coming in with pre New York and New York open, I think we should break this high and continue on towards 136, 400. Um, would a valid entry be the break and close above 135, 8, 135, break and close above 135, 850? I don't know, Rob, you got to read your question there like two times, three times. Okay, we're getting some sort of a rejection over here. Um, 135, I don't know, 135, 850 is way down over here. Price is at 136, 150. So we can't think about 135, 850 when price is right over here. Because if you start thinking about what price is going to do down over here, you might miss the move that's happening over here. So you need to focus on, right, I mean... <laughs> This, this is this. I don't know. I'm yeah. Like when price comes down here, then we're gonna start to look at that. But right now, price is over here, so we're only gonna focus on this over here. Oh, would it have been a valid impulse entry? Yes, that would have been a valid impulse entry at that point. Let's take a look at this chart here. This is your JPY <clears throat> entry at the break. Expecting to reach resistance at the top right here, close 50%. That's pretty good. Pretty good. I think I think your JPY is doing like kind of like the same thing as um, GJ here is trying to come down and trying to make a support for price to continue bullish. Um, would you explain why we should focus on one pair and one session? Yeah, because if you focus on one pair and one session, slowly you get, you start to get better at it, right? You start to read, you start to read the pair much better. You start to understand the session much better. Um, I cashed a big move, but I want to know if it was a valid one. Expected buy is stop loss below the low of the previous candle. Price close above resistance. It's pretty good. It was valid. You know, price was consolidating here, came down, created a support, made rejection wicks over here. You entered a buy for price to retest these highs here and you got to move up. So I think it's pretty good. Um, if you could name a few good pairs, then GJ. Um, for me, good pairs, I mean, any pair is good if it's open in the session that you're trading. You know, if you're trading the New York and London session, I think um, GJ is pretty good. Your JPY is pretty good. Your JPY is pretty good. GU is pretty good as well. If um, both currencies, like one is really strong and one is really weak, those are pretty good pairs. Your USD, your USD is also is also okay. Your GBP is also okay. You know, like all the pairs are pretty good. You just need to devote your time to one pair. You know, in the start, it may seem like the pair is pretty hard to trade and you can't really understand it. But the more you look at it, the more you're going to understand it, you know, so it takes time. It, it doesn't take like two, three days. It takes like months of watching one pair and really understanding it. 
Could you tell me if my trade was a tri Could you tell me if my trade was a good trade? Total win was 24 pips. Just a random guy. Well, random guy will look at your random chart. And I'm pretty sure if you won a trade, it was a good trade. Yeah, it was a pretty good trade. As soon as candle closed bullish, right over here. Initial target was here. Move stop to break even. Close position. Yeah, it's beautiful. Beautiful trade. You know. Ooh, looks like we're coming down. What if we create a bigger area of support right over here? Or what if it corrects the whole move? That's going to be crazy. But we have to wait. GJ is bearish in the weekly time frame. Will you still look for buys? Yes, I'm looking for buys. Because they're trading based on a 30 minute time frame and a one hour time frame. And just by looking at it, we are rejecting a support down at 135,700. We rejected that support. We broke above this resistance at 135,900. We broke above this another resistance at 136. And we made a high at 136,240. Right. So if I'm looking for buys, I'm looking for a retracement, obviously, which is happening right now. And I'm looking for a support formed on the 30 minute time frame, at least so that, like, you know, price can. Um, so high is being made. Price is coming down. We want a support formed somewhere in this vicinity so that we could continue on up to re retest this higher here. So that's. That's what I'm waiting for here today. Is your strategy purely based on price action or on fundamentals as well? It's it's purely based on price action. I mean, it's all price action. I mean, it's all about reading candles. It's all about judging where candles can go, anticipating where price can go. It's just that, you know, so gold is now starting to range over here as well. Let's, um, let's take a look at your JPY. Euro JPY is, oh wow, oh damn, this thing is just dropping, it's dropping back down to support, crazy. Four are also coming down, daily candles also bearish, yeah, it's dropping down to a very, very strong support, so let's see what happens there. Uh, was a strong move up a possible fake out on which pair? I think you're missing some information. Other than NFP, is there any trading news which you take off, which you take days off to not trade? Um, probably not. You know, NFP is the only thing that I'm gonna like. You know, maybe be cautious about because it's on a Friday as well. But with the pound, with the pound coming on, with the interest rates, I think it's going to be pretty interesting tomorrow. I'm really, really looking forward to the interest rates tomorrow for the pound. All right, let's take a look at this chart. This chart is on GJ. Okay, perfect. Good trade. Let's take a look at what I want to see is I want to see some analysis. You know, because trades in the past, they all look good. You know, when losses, they all look good. But let's see here. This is GJ. Um, candles broke out of resistance, waiting for support to be established, looking for possible entry around here due to break of the previous bearish candle. I think instead of now, this is where I, I say that the impulse entries, they basically mean there's lack of confidence, right? Um, when when price is creating a support, you should be confident enough to execute at that point rather than say that, oh, okay, well, support has been formed. I don't want to enter right over here. I want to enter at the break of the high of the previous candle. That shows lack of confidence. You know, so if a support is formed, I'm not going to be waiting for a price to continue up to break the high. I'm just going to be executing at that support because then your stop is going to be much better as well and like, you know, uh, took this trade at the London Open. Wanted your opinion if I entered correctly. Maybe too early. Um, 
lower high lower low created on this candle GPAUD broke previous support entered on open on this candle stop loss above the previous yes yeah, pretty good pretty good trade price continues to make lower low lower high all right what's this support formed pips already secured bullish candle close of a recent high one hour double bottom support formed. okay so what was the outcome here you secured positions you won the trade did it continue moving forward yeah I think it was a pretty good trade because price moved up all right looks like we're rejecting here at this point let's get things ready let's get things ready So what I'm going to be looking to do over here is, I'm going to be looking to, um, waiting for this 15 minute candle, once it breaks the high of the previous 15 minute candle, I think that's going to be a pretty good opportunity to enter a buy and expect price to continue moving bullish. Yeah, I think that's going to be a, that's going to be a pretty good idea. here if I can execute at 136 185 have to stop below the previous 15 minute candle and expect price to continue on towards 136 400 yeah I think that's a pretty good idea if the one hour closes below 136 100 price may continue down towards 135 900 shall see what happens still got 10 minutes left for this candle to close all right this is uh, breaking below the zone I prefer to buy breaking below this zone I prefer to buy I think I would regard the recent rally fake out impulsive sell sell I mean okay yeah you gotta fix this when you send the charts because it really confuses people so okay yeah, it makes sense so you're looking for sells if price comes back down over here I think at the same time you should also look for buys too I'm, I mean if you're on, only going to execute on sells that's good but also have buys planned out as well even though if you're not going to execute on the buys even like you know still have them planned out in, the, in, in your head that look if the sells don't work out maybe the buys are going to work out at this point Let's take a look at this analysis here. This is coming in. Ooh, what's this? Entered sell on a 15 minute break of the low. 15 minute is a weak confirmation frame, but uh, once price is five pip in profit, yeah, it got stopped out at one pip drawdown. Well, if this was your one trade of the day and you wasted a trade on this low confirmation time frame, then. Uh, I don't know like I want to say this was a really dumbass trade but I'm not gonna say it you know I think it was it was okay you planned it and that's yeah, okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know all this, you gotta trade the trend man you have to trade the trend <laughs> I didn't say it I didn't say it I wanted to say it but I'm not gonna say it you know <laughs> but you get the idea Um, are you entering an impulse and not waiting for a candle to close because of the volume? Yeah, so basically this 30 minute candle is still open, right? There are like eight minutes left for this 30 minute candle to close. And this candle is closing with a wig, big wick. Now, I'm also looking at the 15 minute candle here. If this 15 minute candle does, does break the high over here, then I'm going to be looking to enter with an impulse entry for price to continue moving up. But if it closes below this area, then I'm going to wait for the next 30 minute candle to potentially break the high and continue moving bullish. Because if the next candle breaks the high over here, then I'm going to consider this wick as an exhaustion wick, you know, as like a liquidity grab for price to continue moving up.
that's what controller is doing yeah man he's my son this guy he streams a new york session on youtube he just does everything like me it's like it's like my photocopy it's like my clone but an asian version you know he's <laughs> he's like my little son over there um, this is a losing trade, but I did manage it right. Let's take a look here. Clean traffic, candle formed support, broke resistance. Okay, took an impulse entry. Uh, closed half and candle entered half. When candle broke 30 minute low, it doesn't make sense. Close half and candle enter. When candle entered to my entry and closed another half when it broke the 15 minute candle lows. Close full when the 30 minute candle broke the low. I don't see the 30 minute candle breaking any low over here. It seems like it went in profits and then next one. Oh, next one came in. Okay. Okay. You managed it right. Okay. That's good. That's perfect. Um, is it not a big stop loss for that long? Yes. So basically if you're executing over here, your stop is going to be around 17, 18 pips. So I'm going to be reducing my uh, lot size and anticipating price to continue moving bullish. Let's take a look at Euro GBP over here. Uh, price coming down, AI retest 10 pips secured, runner is still open. Now looking for price to form support, retrace, form resistance and sell. I think this makes sense because if we can get, if you can get a bullish uh, continuation on GJ, that means pound is going to get strong. And as pound gets stronger, I think then you could get a continuation on Euro GBP here as well. You know, because pound getting stronger and Euro getting weak would make sense for your GP to continue moving bearish. So you're right, waiting for like a little retracement or even like a bullish candle of some sort and then continue price moving down. Hey, as a trader who is still not profitable, would you recommend entries on breaks or rather wait for candles to close? I would say wait for candles to close. Because as you wait for can candles to close, you will miss on moves. And missing moves is a part of the game. Because when you miss moves, that's an opportunity for you to look back and see, okay, how could you have entered that trade? You know? And yeah, like if you see this move right over here, this move up, this move up. Mostly I miss these moves all the time. And when I'm missing these moves and I'm waking up in New York session and looking at this, I'm never going to say that, hey, man, shit. Like, I wish I was awake. At London session to take this trade I missed this trade no never because I know there's gonna be opportunity everywhere okay price is coming up it's got to come up a little bit more at around 184 136 184 it broke the high at that point entered a long right over here keeping my stop under the current 15 minute candle right over here and expecting price to continue on with pre New York pre-New York volume, and as you move into the New York Open in about an hour, really expecting price to continue moving bullish. Why are you not considering stop loss up under the current 15 minute? Yeah, that's where the stop loss is. Gold is back bullish. Um, why did you wait for the break of high? Are you not confident in the trade? No, because it did break the high right over here. And I waited for the break of the high because that's what my plan was. And if I wait for the candle to close, I may miss the move coming up right over here. So there's a difference, right? There's a difference when you're waiting for the break of the high or when you're entering, you know, an impulse entry as it's breaking the high.
perfect we're running good over here yeah so basically once we broke the high over here that means the 30 minute candle has also gone bullish right at this point and we got around two minutes left for this candle to close so as now now here's the thing right even though my stop loss is around 15 pips you can see here it's 15 pips looking at the 15 minute time frame it's below the 15 minute candle it's 15 pips as price moves into 10 pip profit i'm going to secure 10 pip profits right remember this i'm going to secure 10 pip profits even though my stop is 15 pips because as i secure 10 pip profits i'm going to put in my stop loss at break even so at that point you know i would have been in Securing profits is actually a very good thing. Would you enter another position at the close of 30 minute time frame? Um, we'll see what happens. We still got two minutes left, so it's very early to talk about entering another position. But if the next 30 minute candle closes bullish, we'll see if we can get another one at the break of the high of this area right over here. As a beginner trader, based on just price action, I'm able to become profitable. Yes. Your JPY is still in this area over here, kind of like struggling in this vicinity. I think the key the key idea is to always, always manage risk, you know, always manage risk. Whenever I'm in a trade, I'm always looking to see that, okay, if price comes in a drawdown, how am I managing my risk? How am I closing less or, or how am I losing less than what I anticipated to lose, right? Because if price hits my stop over here, I'm going to lose $700 right and what I'm looking to see is that okay if price comes back down what are some of the signs I can see in price action which will allow me not to lose 700 but to lose like less than 700 um, someone is asking a dumb question here is there any reason why you don't like control effects I never said that that's I don't know how people get these rumors in their minds or how they make up things or something like that but man listen you guys need to really stop thinking about what people think about someone else. See now gold is also forming this bullish structure. Let's take a look at the um, Chinese indicator over here. Let's see what the Chinese are saying here. The Chinese are saying that the pound is really strong. Yen is okay. So they're saying GJ should basically kind of like range at that point. They're saying um, the dollar is pretty weak, which means gold should continue moving up. So yeah, let's see what happens here. Um, looking at gold, gold is bullish. It's creating that bullish market structure, which makes sense for the dollar to be weak. Looking at pound, the 15 minute candle closed above the previous candle. So now for this current 15 minute candle, for it to continue moving bullish, it needs to respect the low of the previous 15 minute candle and then continue up. But if in case it starts coming down, now I got to see that, okay, how am I going to be uh, like, you know, managing my risk in this trade? So if I look at the five minute time frame, so if price breaks below, I would say if price breaks below 136, 100, I think that's going to be a point where I'm going to be closing 50% of my trade. If we break below 136, 100, I think that's going to be a pretty good idea to close 50%. Look at GJ. GJ, GJ, GJ. GJ is lower high, lower high, uh, looking for rejection of this area to look for cells to retest the low. Since Friday seems to create a high to the limit pre New York, looking for further signs that this pattern may continue. Okay, so you're looking for price to continue down. I think I think cells are going to be pretty good if we if we break below let's take a look on the 15 minute yeah i think if we break below this area here the support right here then we could start looking for sales but as long as we stay above this area i think i think buys are still going to be in and also the fact that as we start coming down we come into this resistance area right over here so i think sales are going to be much better sales are going to be below 135 
900 I'd say yeah Um, what's this? What trading strategy do you use apart from price action? Do you use the beat the market maker strategy? I have no idea how that beat the market maker strategy works. I just focus on price action. Right? Because here's the thing. So let's say if someone's in a buy on gold. You know, if you're in a buy on gold, you're expecting price to respect this area here and continue moving up, right? Now, we can't control where price is going to go. Okay, we, we can only control how much risk we can have in the trade or how much risk we can control. So if we're looking at this GJ trade right over here, now we can't really control where price is going to go. All we can see is that, okay, if price breaks certain levels, maybe those are points where we may be like, you know, mitigating our risk or managing our risk. That's it. If price goes up, that's perfect. We win. If price comes down, then the only thing we can do is just control risk. And like, you know, that's the uh, basics of trading. When you look from the one hour, it doesn't look like a buy makes much sense. If I look on the one hour, it doesn't look like a buy. If I look on the one hour, yeah, it doesn't look like a buy on the one hour. Um, if the only time frame it looks like a buy is on the 15 minute, which is a weak confirmation time frame. And if this 15 minute candle flips bullish and we break the high on the 30 minute here, then the 30 minute candle will look like a buy. And once the 30 minute candle looks like a buy and when we look on the one hour and the one hour is going to break the high here, then the one hour candle looks like a buy, right? So these buys, if it's going to continue going up, these buys are being started from the 15 minute time frame, And then slowly they will like, you know, waterfall into the 30 minute and the one hour and and obviously the overall four hour time frame is going to continue moving bullish. things happening today yes FOMC this afternoon man that's gonna really really rather go like just before elections I don't think they will change anything yeah um, gold is back to that interesting spot that we talked about yesterday so I think if people saw the gold move yesterday we hit uh, 1969 and rejected and went all the way back down 1970 um, that was um, I guess what we talked about being in the daily and the weekly zone that major level I have a feeling that um, if the feds come in and talk today if they talk about anything related to uh, stimulus or uh, you know positivity with the dollar we're gonna hit that zone again and reject and head right back down yeah, you're right. Any positive news? Yeah, for sure. And the, if, you, if people have been watching, the US 30 has been plowing up based on anticipation of the news. Um, that's actually very scary as well. Um, from a long term perspective with US 30, I really want to grab a dump when it uh, like grab the grab the dump, not grab a dump, but grab the dump when it drops. Um, I have a feeling come election time, this instability that we have will allow it to drop. So with US 30, as it keeps rising, um, once again, if you do trade US 30, we are coming to the upper levels of uh, previous highs. So as we come into November, you may want to make a note for yourself on a piece of paper or wherever you make long term notes that US 30 will probably have a big correction. Um, and you might find that it drops down back into 25,000 um, or 20, you know, from 28,000, 29,000 back into 25,000. 
as we come close to the election period. So those are those are the things that I'm watching right now. Um, gold, I think I'll trade this afternoon. I'll trade it during FOMC. I'll wait to see what we get out out of the conference. I won't touch it right now because I don't want to be in any positions until after two o'clock. But um, I think gold, if it does reject this area again, we could easily drop to uh, 1950s, even uh, 1940s. Oh, below here, going down to 1950. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, so um, I'm going to wait till later on this afternoon, but this is a zone that we're entering. Um, and if we don't break 1969, we're going to drop right back down into the 1950s. Um, so, but I'm just going to wait until that point, um, to see what the feds come up with. I mean, if not, then we're all the, we're going all the way back up to 1990. So. Yeah. We'll have to wait to see what they say in the press conference here. Yes. Uh, impulse entry as candles breaks the highs. Uh, You know, since this is a very, very strong resistance, I would want to see some sort of uh, support forming in this area for price to continue moving bullish. Because price can move up, it can spike up basically, and then look left and kind of like reject this area with a wick and then come back down. So for a safe trade, I would want to see some sort of uh, support forming here. Looks like GJ is moving up over here. 15 minute candles about to close in five minutes. Yeah, I think you're good. This Mac? Yep. One of this five minute candle close over 136. Uh, 200. Yeah, that's what I was looking at with that five minute candle. Uh, liking it. All right, GJ still, it's still a mess. That daily candle, it has to break above, like uh, Kavan said, over 136,600, to be honest. I think right now we're still stuck in that range. So you'll, you'll catch a quick buy and then it potentially could whipsaw back down. GJ, yeah, there's a potential. Yeah, but, the, but you know what? If 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 today that daily candle breaks out, you're going to, you're probably going to hit 137. If it do, if it does break out for any strange reason, um, which corrects the the daily candle from, uh, I believe it is uh, from the from September 10th. So it'll it'll push all the way back up to to the to that uh, through 137. Oh yeah, right over here. This actually makes sense because we're rejecting yes. a strong support. Yes, um, and that's I think that's what we talked about yesterday. That if it if it rejected that support or you know, it, it would either drop below down to 130, you know, obviously 134 or it would fly back up. Um, and yesterday, I guess yesterday morning, it did exactly what we said. It would hit like 135, 560s or the 600s, and then it stalled again over there. So we could have the same thing that happens today, which will be great. Um, if this pulls all the way up for a bit, you get a winning trade on the buy side. It goes to, you know, 136, uh, 400 rejects there and then the rest of the morning tanks again I mean it could be it could be the exact same trade that we got yesterday but I have a feeling now with uh, the G GDP statement coming out for the pound tomorrow um, the markets are setting up for that man remember this one time uh, pound interest rates came on um, I had a news account I ran that news account from 12,000 to 33,000 I had a buy stop, buy stop got activated, I had a 30 lots, and then the entire platform froze. Price went up 20 pips and came back down 
to my stop loss. It crossed my stop loss. And then it continued dropping 120 pips. My account went from 33,000 to negative 14,000. And, and then I called IC Markets. I'm like, hey, guys, what's going on over there? <laughs> <laughs> and then they said, oh, yeah, our whole shit is frozen over here. So don't worry. When it's done, we're going to refund you money back. We're like, okay, okay, cool. That's good. <laughs> so I'm like, what about the profits? Can you refund the profits too? They're like, no, no, no. <laughs> Just what you lost. But yeah, that was a pretty stressful day there. I saw the entire thing. So imagine this thing goes up. You hit close, it doesn't close, and it just starts, and you watch it just coming down. And you know it's forming market structure to go down. You're like, oh, man, can't do anything about this. Can't take a sell, can't even close, nothing. So that was super stress, stress trading. How do you close? <laughs> How do you close partials like 50% manually without magic keys? Is that possible? Yes, you need to Google that. It's a four-step process. What do you think about this EN chart? Let's take a look here. Uh, broke below support. Yeah, I think you need to wait for some sort of a minor resistance to be forming here. And then take a sell. Just like right here, right? Price came up, came down, kind of formed that support kind of area. And now this candle is about to close in a minute. If it closes bullish, so, okay, here's the thing, right? Now, since when this candle was open and when price was going in a drawdown, it was really hard to manage the risk, right? Now, if this candle closes bullish, now it's going to be really easy to manage risk because here's what's going to happen. If this candle's, candle closes bullish, this one here, now you're expecting the next candle to respect this low and continue making a higher high and continue moving up. But if for some reason the next candle breaks this low, then I'm going to close 50% of my position, you know, and that's going to be really easy to manage risk because if it breaks the slow, then there's a, then the probability becomes higher for it to, you know, continue down to this low and take us out. So instead of losing the hundred percent position, it's better to lose like, you know, less. Still at that support. Do you expect retail sales to affect GJ today? Let's take a look here and let's use our brains here. So, if we're looking at core retail sales, right? Core retail sales are for the US dollar. So, if we want to look at US dollar and then we want to ask ourselves that, okay, how much are the retail sales are going to affect the pound? You know, will really like retail sales increasing in the dollar would affect pound? And the answer is going to be probably not, you know, probably not a big effect. So here we have the 15 minute candle closing now. And now this 15 minute candle is our do or die candle here. This is the do or die candle. This candle has to do to go up. It has to die so that we can manage risk. Let's take a look at GU here. People are in GU. Ooh, daily candle looks, look at this, man, this GU looks exactly like GJ, but GU is coming up to this area much faster. This area right over here. And this is the same area we have on GJ on the daily candle, right? All the way up over here. So it's much far away. But the only thing I'm looking at GJ is if it continues going up, it needs to fill this daily wick at 136,400. But imagine, imagine if price is gonna fall tomorrow, for the interest rates and today someone walks in with some brexit news and price just goes up and then falls tomorrow i think that's going to be a really really good scenario that can happen imagine that happens man what a highlight is that going to be today they predicted the brexit news today <laughs> Aren't they going through with a hard Brexit anyways? So either way, it's going to be it's going to be finished one way or another. Yeah. See, the thing with that is, I mean, 
every time they decide to go with hard Brexit, something comes in and it just everyone just leaves it where it, where it was. Like I've been noticing this before the this virus came, they were on the brink of Brexit deal, and then virus came and everything just went <laughs> it went under the rug. <laughs> Uh, what do you guys have step stop loss set at? I don't know. We don't have a stop loss here. Sometimes I really question what people see on the screen. You know, like I have the same screen running on my one screen here. I don't understand. I just don't understand. Gold is ranging. Way to for retail sales. Um, when in a trade and price is trending in your direction after you break even, at what point do you keep on adjusting your trailing stop loss to catch some pips? Basically, let's say price goes up towards so of that 180, goes towards 280, right? If price goes to 280, I'm securing 10 pips and then I'm putting my stops at break even. If I don't get stopped out and if price hits 136,400, then I'm going to close my entire position or, not, or I'm going to see, like, do I want to keep one position open or do you want to close it? So, so that's all personal preference. People enjoy your day. I had a one pip loss to trade, but GJ looks so hard to trade today. So I'm going to spend some time with my girlfriend. Wish you all luck. Wish you luck as well, my friend. Take care. 15 minute has broken the high at this point, which is looking good. Let's take a look on the 30 minute. 30 minute has also broken the high here, which is extremely good. It's wicked, mate. And let's take a look on the one hour time frame here now. One hour has not broken the high at this point. So we are not in open waters right now. We are in shallow waters where there are sharks. So once we cross this high over here, then we're going to have a smooth sailing going all the way up to 136,400. Let's go out then. Yeah. We need to tap 136.250. Then we're going to be in safe waters at that point. Modi is banning crypto trading. I swear he will ban. I will never vote for him again. See, the thing about India is that Modi controls everything. So now Modi is the president of India, right? He wants to ban everything everything they call it a democracy but in india it's basically a dictatorship of modi <laughs> you know one thing i really like about india is that india never lets bad news go out in the media never ever they let that happen they're so controlled you never hear bad news from india like you know on the mainstream channels So there we go. One hour candle has also broken the high here. So now one hour has 40 minutes left to close. And I think there's a very high probability we're going to continue up towards 136,400 here. Especially the 15 minutes here now. We're moving up. We should continue moving. I think at like 136,300, I'm going to be securing positions and leaving some positions run. Probably what I'm going to do at the same time is bring my stop loss a little higher over here. Below the previous 15 minute candle. Okay, let's take a look at this chart here. This is GU 15 minute, GU 37 pip buys, price broke support, broke resistance, entered as price broke 15 minute, this, this, this. Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good. So we're moving up over here. We're coming up. Yeah, just be careful because we could reject anywhere between this area and uh, 4, 420. Yeah. All right. So we're almost at 10 pips right here. Secured 10 pips at this point and putting stops at break even and letting the rest run. Perfect. Beautiful. So... The Gulag, if you caught this trade, you know, give a like on the stream because it helps a lot of people, man. This is literally free money. Just how, man? How do these retards come here every day and give out free money? How? 
man. <laughs> I just did a bad thing. <laughs> it was about to run the stop loss at entry at close full, <laughs> close full <laughs> position. Oh, you it's press got... full position? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God damn. Yeah, it's wow. so annoying, right? You're like, oh man. Ah, it's okay. <laughs> Dude, I did that mistake last week. Roger, I got a quick question. Sure. On the close half, do I have to adjust the settings on there? Is automatic close half? No, it automatically closes half. Okay. There's the close custom button right here, which you have to adjust the settings. Okay. So I have close custom set at 75%. You know, so when price goes in drawdown, and I'm not comfortable, I just press close custom. So close is 75%. You need to make magic keys bigger with background lighting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> need LEDs. I need LEDs. No, uh, like I said, I think magic keys 2.0 will be the, the mobile version where it has like a little LCD screen on it and you can actually just connect it to your, to your phone and just have it in your pocket. Oh man. So you can pull out your magic keys out, out of your pocket and then just be able to click close half or whatever without seeing your MT4, MT5. Like I'm getting beeper. excited now. <laughs> excited now. That, that was the second iteration because I think we talked about that in, in uh, Raja and I talked about like what you could do to change it. Um, Cause the first iteration I think was, was very good. Like we actually had some better buttons but they didn't make the final cut like the nuclear button which would be like like basically delete your account because you're over trading <laughs> yeah yeah that was a new <laughs> yeah yeah that was like complete shutdown button yeah like there was there was literally a button that was going to tell you like you shouldn't be trading anymore pretty good like if you enter a bigger lot it shows you on the screen that hey dumbass like you're risking this percentage are you sure you want to continue and they're like, oh, yeah, well, I guess he's right. <laughs> I don't want to, if I want to continue. Uh, Roger's excited. Why is this man standing up? Because I have a standing desk. I wouldn't be standing. I mean, I can't sit down and have my hands like this, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, it's going up. So I got to stand up. struggling yeah it's just looking good now 30 minute can is about to close in four minutes we've broken above the highs over here we have kind of like clean traffic going up towards 136 400 so as long as like you know this position stays in price should continue moving up to our target hey i'm in gu long for our candle please have a look let's take a look Took a trade once it's kind of closed. Oh, beautiful. Very nice. Good trade. Very, very good trade. Can Magic Keys manage one or more trades at the same time? How? You need to go to the website. Uh, what was you like job before doing trading? Let's talk about life. Um, I used to be a daughter or salesman. I think doing sales, it kind of like taught me like not how to sell, but also like figure out that it's, it's all a numbers game. You know, like if you talk to 50 people and if you want 50 people to buy something, you know, like out of those 50 people, maybe like two or three people are going to buy something from you. And once you reach a target, like let's say you reach like one sale a day or two sales a day, you're like, okay, you know what? I'm done now. In trading, it's the same thing. You know, you come here, you look for the same things, you execute on the same things, but you know that logically, if you execute on the same things every day, overall, you're gonna have a positive outcome. You know, and the only reason that's not gonna work if you introduce over trading and over risking, it's the same thing in sales. You know, like if you get one sale and you wanna get more sales, the only reason for you to get sales is to 
get in front of more people like you know talk to more people call more people like just be out there so trading in that part of my life did like it's kind of like very similar um door to door there was no set pay it was commission only so my first question to them was i remember i walked in the office and they're like okay so there's going to be no hourly pay it's only commission i'm like oh so if i make a sale i get paid they're like yeah i'm like oh man that's pretty hard and the guy looked at me he's like well you got to decide brother if you're a lion or a gazelle <laughs> and when he said that i'm like yeah i guess i'm a lion let's go <laughs> yeah first that's a month, numbers game bro first month the lion went hungry <laughs> there was nothing <laughs> so i had to learn the rules of the jungle <laughs> yeah it's not done for everyone it's hard yeah, it's pretty hard but you learn a lot i did it also yeah it's like when people say no or they or they just shoo you off you know they're like shoo shoo no shoo yeah close that door on your nose you know yeah. um can we read every single candle and where are you from i don't think those two questions have things in common so we're going to ignore it um when will the next round of magic keys be shipped they ship every friday and monday if gj creates a support in that brick of high then is it okay to buy again no i think i think another safe entry for buy would have been once this candle was breaking the high on the 30 minute and it was breaking the high over here at that point you could have had your stop below the 30 minute candle but it's still pretty it's pretty wonky over here as we're moving up um into the ny session so the ny open is going to come in about you know 30 minutes here so we're really expecting price to continue on towards 136 400 so yeah let's see what happens if you get stopped out or price continues on but secure 10 pips here so that's good hey stop scamming people with profits just ridiculous ah, i don't know man it's just it's a part of my nature now Um, how can you trade candle by candle? Kind of off topic. Do you watch any sports? I watch rugby and yeah, I watch rugby. It's all about using big candles like one day ones or even one week ones. This way you can trade candle by candle in order to break even or even make a nice net loss. I don't think you can make a nice net loss. I think when you talk about nice net losses, that's about when you're not using stop losses or you're over trading. That's when you make some really nice net losses. So 30 minute candle has closed bullish. It closed below this minor resistance here. So now you're really expecting price to respect this low and continue moving bullish. You know, now, uh, before when I took this trade, my stop was 15 pips. I secured 10 pips. And even though now currently, if we're just talking about presently what's happening is, I secured 10 pips and now my stops are at break even. You know, so now my, my risk reward is zero to whatever. You know, zero to whatever. That's my risk reward now. Risk reward is not based on how you enter the trade. It's about how you're managing the trade. Oh, Ooh. <laughs> yeah. break even. Yeah, break even got stopped out at break even. But at the same time, it hasn't really broken the low on the 30 minute here. You know, so it still should be pretty okay for people who are still in it. But yeah, we got break even there. Um, so if you look here, the 15 minute, the reason why 15 minute is a weak confirmation time frame because this candle broke the low of the previous 15 minute candle, but it's respecting the 30 minute low right over here. So even if it's breaking the 15 minute, this is where you're being cautious about your trade, maybe taking some risk off, but overall you're still in the trade because it's still respecting the low on the 30 minute here. If you go over to the hour, Raja, cool. um, which is the hour here you'll see what we're what we're coming into right now. So the, this area over here is is a massive zone, to, to be honest, um, on the hourly. So if you were trading this, um, ideally what you'd say to yourself is, 
we're anticipating bullish movement. So this zone should be pierced on, on the hourly. So this is just getting pulled back and you might find the next hour then continues to drive up. But if for whatever reason, if the next hour starts to bit, do a bit of a pullback in this region, you may want to look at uh, closing the opportunity or you know managing the trade accordingly, just because you can see, uh, let me get a better color here. You can see this area over here where we could potentially mimic it right over here because we've seen it happen over here. So as we start to come up, we just have to be cognizant of that. Um, this candle here will go up and probably mimic this candle. You might find that this candle gets filled because you have sort of a clean move and it negates the, um, the two wicks that were there previously, but then maybe pulls back later on. So it's just something to be aware of if people are trading GJ and they're wondering why it's struggling to push through this zone on the smaller time frames. It's because you have a major zone on the higher time frame there on the one hour. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I'm only looking for price to come up to here because for price to move beyond this point, I think it'll need some sort of a fundamental catalyst. Agreed. Strong area over here. Uh, if I donate money to the stream, who does it go to? It goes in my pocket. Well, so far I haven't seen it, but apparently it should go to the pocket, but so far it's going to some some non-profit organization. That's where YouTube is sending it to. Hey, what do you do for back control? What, what do you do for back control of your trades? Or do you save any written history? Back control. I don't do anything for my back control. I just take a trade, and if that's a losing trade, I look at the trade afterwards and then see how I could have had a winning trade. If it's a winning trade, I look at that trade and see that, okay, how could I have had a better trade? Or how could I have had a better entry? And then I move on to the next day. I don't know about backtracking. Back testing, I think you meant. Oh, wow, look at that. Gold is retracing here. Maybe it's grabbing liquidity to come down to here and with bad retail news, it's just gonna go boom, boom, boom. We'll see what happens. When do you determine to have an impulse entry or wait for a price to break and create support resistance? That's a very important question and that takes time. You know, I mean, uh, most times what you should be doing is you should be waiting for candles to close, candles to like, you know, form those confirmations for price to go up. But sometimes you miss the moves, you know, sometimes price does not form those confirmations and keeps on moving. And as we look over here, we're approaching a target at 136,400 here after filling this wick. Once we break this high, we can continue on. And you see how 15 minute broke, broke the low here? It's a weak confirmation time frame. You know, 30 minute, much stronger confirmation. Still got 24 minutes left. Let's take a look at this chart here. Enter at the break of the 15 minute. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, I think I saw this idea before. But the whole plan was to maybe wait for price to create a support to continue going up. Would it be wise to have a sell limit around 136,400? Okay. Probably not. I don't think it's going to be a good idea at all. Because I think it's going to be a good idea if price comes up over here and forms a resistance and then you can take a sell. I think that's going to be a good idea. But not over here. Can I use magic keys on multiple pairs while on MetaTrader? Um, magic keys is only designed, it's best used if you have paired it with maximum two pairs. So in other sense, it's meant to use for discipline traders, you know. Um, hey, how will you be looking for another opportunity to get back in on GJ? Um, probably another, I mean, looking at this, it just seems like 
the entries were over here. You know, now if you're taking an entry at this point, your stop is below the current 30 minute candle right here around 10, 11 pips and you're anticipating price to continue going up. Hey, one question. I opened the trade at 182. Okay, 182. Oh, and close 75% at 10 pips. Then price retrace to original open and stop out. This is correct. I should have a little bigger stop for my runner. Um, that's totally up to you. That's totally up to you. When you're placing, here's the thing. Whenever you're placing stops at break even, you're placing stops at break even, accepting the fact that you will get stopped out at break even and you're going to be okay with that. That's the reason you're putting stops at break even. If you're securing 10 pips and you're placing the stop at the same position as it were before, then you're also accepting the fact that, okay, price may continue down and stop out my runner in a drawdown. You know, so those are things that you have to identify, you know, because sometimes you can have stops at break even and price can continue running, you know, but most times price will also stop you out and continue running. You know, so it's up to you what you want to do. Like either you want to secure positions and leave your original stop to where it was, you know, accepting that you may get stopped out in a loss with your runner or you can put it at break even. Um, he entered this trade. Do you think it's a good idea? Let's take a look here. Um, I don't know. I think you should be waiting for a minor resistance to be formed for price to continue down because we're just making a low over here. And GJ is continuing. Continuing bullish. Ooh, look at that moves. Galloping like a horse over here. Like a wild stallion running through the savannas. Yeah, that, I think that's exactly what we were talking about earlier um, when we we're talking about piercing through that zone. Um, once we start to do that, that's where you get that strong move. So a lot of times what people see, they'll see that big impulse push up. Um, and that means that we're pushing through that zone, which we want, because then it's easier for us to get to the 400s as we push through. So now when you look on your hourly candles, you'll see that we're going right through that candle to the left, that clear traffic. Yeah, it should continue on to our target over here. Let's see here. What's the title of this YouTube studio file? This song is called Hear the Noise. Uh, your JPY has hit a strong support. One candle closing bullish does not mean price is reversing. That's something I've learned. You know, so maybe you want to wait for the one hour candle to close bullish or maybe to me, it just seems like, man, we broke the support, came down to another support. So price should continue up to create like a minor resistance to continue down. I think taking buys at this point is extremely risky. It's just not a proper way. I mean, that just shows that there's a lack of discipline over there. So you want to wait for price to come up to create like a minor resistance and then take a cell to fill this range right over here. Uh, Raja mad that he got stopped out. Oh, trust me, I'm never mad when I get stopped out. I'm actually okay, man. I get happy when I can manage risk and close in a small loss as well. Uh, why are you still in the trade even if the price went below your break even price? I don't know, it just looks good when it hits target here. So we're gonna keep it here. Because with the target and the horns, oh man, it's gonna look really nice. Gold is also coming down, we're approaching. Some sort of a rejection. So we're gonna have to wait and see what happens here. Are we in a trade right now? No. 
there's no trade open right now. But this was a trade we took earlier. Just just look how beautiful it is on a 30 minute. How nice, you know, lower highs, um, higher lows and higher highs being made on 30 minutes. Just so beautiful. And as this candle comes to a close in 17 minutes, you can just you can just look at this and say that, okay, you know what? This volume is going to come in at New York Open. That New York Open volume is going to push price to our target. It can just, it's so beautiful right over here. And if it does continue up and someone says something about Brexit and price continues moving bullish for to retrace tomorrow with interest rates, oh my days, mate. What a prediction that's going to be. That's going to be some crazy prediction. I think, I think Euro GBP is also moving down over here. Euro GBP, let's take a look over here. Euro GBP, because if the pound is moving up, the Euro GBP should be moving bearish. Yeah, there we go, it's also moving bearish. Was there any confirmations? Maybe on the 15 minute here, as it's breaking the low over here, but if it's dropping down, how far is it dropping down to? Oh, wow, we got, a, we got an area right over here. Yeah, it'll drop right to there. Um, EG does the really wild moves and it just it pulls hard when it does yeah yeah it's funny because when it moves that's the point where the euro and the pound are completely opposite correct yeah and then you get that strong move because you got two very strong currencies yeah. with very with a very big imbalance yeah especially if pound moves up really strong that's going to overall drive your gp further down even if the euro won't have much strength pound is like that your bipolar friend who drinks and goes crazy uh, how does he secure 10 pips by taking profits uh, we have a fish net over here so when price goes in 10 pips, we throw the fish net like this. And then we secure 10 pips and then we pull it back in. <laughs> You're really inspired today. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, how is that when GJ moves, uh, your GBP moves bearish. Your GP is affected by two currencies. Um, the reason why is because when pound moves, pound generally has more volume than the euro. You know, if pound is going to move up and your GBP is going to start moving down, then you can say, okay, like, you know what? Pound has more volume, enough volume to move the entire pair in its direction. You know, even though if the euro is kind of like consolidating, it doesn't have much volume. So, you know, it's still going to move it down. Um, you are the corniest man alive. Oh, yeah, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, here's the thing. Always be confident enough to win and always be confident enough to lose as well. You know, and if you can do that, man, things are going to be all okay. Like most times, you know, people, they get, they get, um, they're, they're shy because they don't want to accept their flaws or they don't want to do like certain things which may embarrass them. Man, that's totally fine. That's you. You know, most people out there, just, okay, actually, let's forget about people and focus over here. So we're moving up. We're coming on towards 136.380. Come on. Can we get 136.390? 136.390. Come on. Yeah, you got the fishing boat out there fishing, ready to yeah. catch the fish. <laughs> so this is a fishing net? Yeah, fishing net on the SS Raja. We're on our way. <laughs> the SS. <laughs> The SS Raja. All right. Coming got in. And stuff. All right, we're coming up. We're coming up right now to 136,391. Can we get it? 136,391. Man, if someone's in this trade right now, you're doing really, really good. Whoever's in this trade so far. Yeah, you should get it probably within the next five minutes. Um, this five minute candle, the previous five minute candle had a huge rejection. And uh, now I think this five minute candle will drive up. Rightfully so. Rightfully, it should continue on. Ooh, God damn. We're coming up uh, 136, 361, 362. Can we get 391, 356? Come on, 13 minutes. This is the start of the new 15 minute candle. This is also the close of this one hour candle. And we're going to move up towards New York Open. 
So really, really expecting New York Open to just tap into the zone, pierce in the zone like a dagger, and do whatever it wants to do after that. Oh, we're coming up. 368, 136, 368. Can we get 136, 391, 365? 371, 371, 136, 378, 378. Can we get to 136, 391? 377. I think this is the point where you should really be looking forward to securing positions, like thinking about runners, thinking about putting stops at break even if you're still in the trade. And oh, we've reached target over here. Get the horns out and we have made it. Yep. And beyond. Yeah, I think anywhere in this zone on the hourly, you should be looking to secure profits because I think we could top out at 500, but um, it may reject very hard at New York Open. It's beautiful. Beautiful. This this was a great example of stress-free trading. Yeah. Stress-free trading with, with the Forex family and team. Uh, break even today. I'm really grateful to have improved the confidence to take the second chance. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. So we had one member, he took a buy over here, got stopped out, and then gave the trade a second chance and won. Just amazing. Beautiful trade. What was this? 21 pips? Whoever was in this trade, you were up 21 pips. I got like 10 to 15 pips out of this trade. Would an entry be possible at the 30 minute close above the zone you drew on GJ, like Ted said yesterday? A little pullback on the hourly and then break and continue above. I think what you would want to do is you would want to find a support being created at this zone for price to continue up. So now, since if you're not in this trade, you obviously missed this trade and now there's going to be a certain waiting period for price to create support and then continue bullish if it will continue bullish so at this time now you just have to wait for price to like you know do certain things yeah ideally now what you're looking at is this area over here so this area over here becomes your area of interest right so that's why i drew out this box because what's going to happen here is we need this level to hold for us to continue to go back up because remember price moves in in sort of steps right and if you see the way that that price moves in steps it, we bounce up step bounce up step bounced up right so you're going to need to see support here at, at this area right here being formed and you can see that this zone here is matching up with this area over here so if i want this to continue up i need a candle that's going to look similar to this to drive up here so ideally this kind of scenario we need up over here so that we get these kind of pushes out of that zone and then we're looking to the left to see where this appears again on whether it's an hour time frame or a 30 minute time frame so that we can then plan our trade and say, okay, perfect. Similar to what Raja said earlier this morning, that this would be a target. Reason being is we have this, but we can see here over this area over here and this information over here sort of matches up with this area over here. So we have actually strong volume at that point. So that's what you'll be looking for. So what, how this trade materialized this area over here you need that to materialize up over here based on this information over here so this is how you should be uh i guess executing trades or looking for trades at that point is once we break away and we have a support and we start to push up where do we see the rejections to drive that market movement up so here we can see we have a major rejection here it doesn't mean that now we start to sell it means that we see how is this zone going to be formed to then continue to push up or if we start to leave that zone we need to see candles moving away from that area now and then where are we going we're going back into a previous zone that's over here so that's how you would anticipate 
the trade and look at those movements. But we can't take another buy over here until we see that we've moved, removed ourselves from that zone so that you know maybe the next candle is up over here or somewhat. So this is how you would manage your trades at that point. Okay, so at this point, you're really, you're, you're stuck in no man's zone or no man's land. So this area here matches up with this over here. We have bullish structure, but we have a rejection point. So you, you sit here and you have to wait now. Your, your trade was this, this information right here. This was your trade right over here. Now you're sitting waiting again. If you look at 15 minutes time, time frame and candle closes here, it looks like uh, it's going to create an evening star doji something. Trend reversal? Yeah, but 15 minute candle won't be a trend reversal. This is just the end of the hour closing, right? Because we're at 7.52 a.m., so almost 8 a.m. Eastern. This is just the hour candle creating a wick. Um, so your last 15 minute candle is pulling back. For us to have clearer confirmation, you need this hour candle to then reject and look bearish. I wouldn't take a 15 minute candle when an hour candle is very strong bullish as a sign of rejection. I would see that as a sign of just exhaustion at the top of this range here. And there's a possibility the next candle drops and then pushes further up because this candle candle's still bullish at that point. Right? So I would want to see candles that look like this over here to confirm that we are dropping at that point, having this candle over here bullish doesn't give me enough information because there's a lot of times where this candle will pull back and an, another a new candle will form and keep driving higher um having a bearish candle such as this allows you to say okay the next two candles could be bearish as well and then we have that free fall down and you have a better confirmation and it's a little bit easier for you to trade rather than saying that this candle now is going to start to drop and, and go the other way that's that's a lot of mistake. A lot of people make that mistake, um, new traders, and they say, "Well, because we're rejecting this zone now, we're going to start going down." Oh, uh, um, it, but I would want to see a bearish candle at that point. Oh, 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 oh! oh. What's happening? <laughs> Uh oh, what's happening? Gulag takeover. Oh, what do you guys see? Just black with like some gray boxes. <laughs> <laughs> I see the it's most. It's written though. Angelica's best moment. <laughs> well, well, as long as you guys can hear me, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, this is a radio show now. Podcast. Yeah, my whole system is frozen right now. It's okay. We will get through this together. Yeah, we're gonna get through this together. Yeah, yeah. What happened was I was trying to um, put my desk down, and it seems like it pulled a wire, and the monitor went off. And when the monitor came back. Everything is frozen. Something's loading. Oh, you see the mouse keys. there? Oh, no, no, no. The gulag wants their money back. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, we want the refund. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to see why. What's the reason behind this freezing? Can someone break down the gray boxes for me so I know when to take them? Oh, but in other news, seems like Gigi is just rejecting that level 136,400. Damn. It's crazy rejection. Prove it. Okay, just uh, try to reconnect the monitor wire. Just remove and uh, try to fix again. Maybe it will work. No, it's still frozen. Have you turned your computer on or off, sir? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to work 100%. But then I'll have to go to the gym because, you know, <laughs> it's going to start yeah, off. The computer, yeah, the computer's not going to reset and let you go back on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're done You're done trading for today. Sorry, sir. Yeah. Oh, 
but yeah, at the same time, you know, trade, trading stuff. Ted, you really have that S20 Ultra? Um, no, I don't know what it's called. Maybe. Like the big giant one. Oh, no, no, no. This is the S20. Um, I don't know what this one is. I just Plus. bought it. I, maybe. Hold on. Let me see if I can figure out what it is. I got this ultra man. This is way too big. Holy about phone. Um S20 plus 5G. I don't think it's the ultra though. Oh you got yeah, ultra is bigger than the five. So you can just imagine how big this thing is. Well, it's it was pretty big to begin with. Um Yeah, I'm just uh trying to figure out which one it is. Oh, it looks like GJ is heading back up over here as we're, com <laughs> as we're coming up towards New York Open. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. Maybe it's just the regular S5 or the S20. Uh, I don't know. I always go. I always go to see the same guy. Anyways, <laughs> he, our our favorite friend out in the Brampton. Yeah. Yes. I always I always feel like uh, Tony Soprano when I walk in there. He's like, hey, Godfather. He's like, how can I help you? You need a new phone? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> what like, do you got for me today? Yeah. He's like, I'll set you up. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I, I think feel this... like that movie, old school. Like when we walk around, it's like old school. Like Vince Vaughn and, uh, oh, oh, uh, you know, like Luke Wilson here. People come up to us. Hey, you guys are awesome. We're like, okay. <laughs> Yo, you want this thing? You want this thing? Just let me know, let me know. People are asking, people are begging you to fix your screen, Raja. I can't. If I fix my screen, I'll have to restart my computer. And if I, once the computer starts restarting, I'm going to start heading out to the gym. <laughs> I think it's going to end. So, Raja, I have a question. Yes, sir. If, if this gray box moves what happens <laughs> which one do we come to <laughs> tp <laughs> i don't know i can't even see the gray blocks all i see is i see gabriel's face i see evan behind a fiery tiger and part of the screen of charts that's all i see but to be honest i was just looking at this area where GJ is 136, 400, like, I mean, Ted's right. That's, if we break above there, then there's just clean run on the daily going up. Going back to 137. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm having buyer's remorse. I'm gonna go back to the place where I got this and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna downgrade to the regular S20. This is just gigantic. Oh yeah, I think you do have the the, the gigantic one because mine is, I would say, uh, the size of my hand. Is See, yours above your? Yeah, it's like at the tip. Uh, so if you go to settings and then you go to about at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that. It uh, says plus. Because I got S twenty plus five G. That's what I have. Oh yeah, you got the plus one. You got the middle one. Oh okay. Oh yeah, S20 plus. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah, S20 plus. Yeah, I didn't get the ultra. You're right. Yeah, I was feeling like Tony Soprano yesterday. They're like, "Which one do you want?" I was like, "The best one." <laughs> <laughs> They're like, "All right, here you go." Uh, what do you think about impulse entries as it breaks the high of the previous 15-minute candle? I think at this point, taking impulse entries is going to be useless on GPJPY because it's a very, very strong resistance over there so this is going to be extremely scary to look for impulse entries
Yeah, man, these phones, this, this is like absolutely crazy what they're trying to do now. Because cause the lady's like, well, you know, you can finance, you can do this, do that. And we go, okay, that's interesting. So now, in the future, the phones are going to get so expensive now. Right now, they're giving, giving out phones at 0% interest. Can you imagine in three years, your phone is like $3,500, four grand, and you're paying interest on it? You know, for the first three months, no interest on your phone. Then after that, there's like 2.99 interest rate. And then insurance companies are going to insure in the phones. That's where we're heading. Someone is spamming the YouTube chat saying black screen can't see anything. That's absolutely true. Um, can anyone tell me why pound pairs are flying, although fundamentals are so weak? Which fundamentals are weak? So can someone tell me which fundamentals are weak? This is why, you know, fundamentals, fundamentals only affect price on your daily and weekly time frames. You know, on the one hour, 30 minute fundamentals have nothing to do on one hour and 30 minutes. You know, so this is just regular market movement where we had range to the left and price was creating that structure to continue. And well, the good thing is we got the highlights in, right? Good thing is that we got the trade. I can't even see the Zoom chat over here. This is going to be the greatest stream. Black screen and we were all still here. Looks like pound is, pound is about to... Crossover 136410. Mr. Essen is unmuted. <laughs> Controller FX hacked you. <laughs> yeah, they were in cells, and I was like, oh, I guess he's not my son. <laughs> <laughs> they were in cells. Oh, yeah, they were in GJ cells. GJ is about to take off. Yeah, I'm looking at it, and the the way the hour is behaving, it's it's really good. It's about to pop up above resistance. I wonder, if, Raja, you want me to share my screen? Can I do that? I know. Can you, you can't see uh, it. Yeah. Oh, he's locked it. Uh, wow. So yeah, but now GJ looks like it's it's, it's going to continue going up. It's about to break the previous one hour. Yeah. Does this happen oh. on a MacBook? Probably not, right? Probably does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Probably happens a lot on MacBook. It doesn't happen on MacBook. Raja, I think you might be able to give, like, make Ted a host or something, then he, he might be able to share his screen. Yeah. Oh, but you can't see your Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Now my switch. Yeah. <laughs> okay, ignore me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't see anything. Let me see if I can log in. But Gulag is going to stay in the real Gulag plus. today. And I have another... Um... And now they're pending about 136.700 when this thing breaks up. Yeah, people are saying just Eleanor starts streaming, we'll all jump there. <laughs> oh, I can't imagine. <laughs> Give her 3,000 people. <laughs> yeah. I think my stream would explode today. <laughs> Hello. 
Yeah, we can do that. We can do that. Well, if you need me to share my screen, actually, I can do that. All right, perfect. Yeah, let's do that. So let me close from here. All right, take care, everyone. This is going to go down now. I'm going to go restart my computer. Uh-oh.